I'm Dr. Bergstrom. Oh, hi, Dr. Bergstrom. I'm Susan Ormiston. We came to a D.C. medical clinic to get a rapid test for COVID antibodies. Are you getting a lot of uh, people testing? 400 of these, I believe, now. You can get one here even without symptoms. How much do you need? Not much. Some employers are asking for it in order to return to work. Very similar to the mono test or the flu test, or we also use this for strep tests. The U.S. is ramping up testing, trying to double it to find out where coronavirus lurked and we didn't know. In my test, there's no evidence of either IgG or IgM antibodies, indicating to me that you have not had this illness enough to have built antibodies. But this other sample from another patient did show positive. Do you worry that there's a false sense of security? Yes, I have a lot of patients who want to get this test to see if it's okay to be around their elderly parents or taking care of a sick loved one. And I am very careful to say that their behavior, no matter what the result is, should never change. They still need to wear masks, they still need to be socially distancing, and they still need to be washing their hands. We do know the virus struck more people than we thought. New York recently reported nearly 14% may have had the virus, even with mild or no symptoms. But still concerns over the test's reliability. Many of them are out there that have not been validated, but a few have been validated by the FDA. A new large trial underway at the National Institute of Health will test blood samples from 10,000 Americans. We're looking to map the, um, the spread in healthy people, so um, currently asymptomatic, so people that aren't sick right now. First results, perhaps early June, will project how many had it, but not if they're immune. The positivity alone won't tell us if that person um, is protected from the disease. That's a next step. Susan Ormiston, CBC News, Washington. Okay, good time to bring in Dr. Isaac Bogosh, an infectious diseases specialist here in Toronto. So, Dr. Bogosh, given the uncertainty, what do we expect antibody testing to reliably show us, and how much stock should we put in it? Yeah, unfortunately, we're not entirely sure of the many antibody tests out there, which ones are reliable and which ones aren't. So it's hard to know uh, what the strong horse is. And in fact, Canada has appropriately dragged its heels to approve these tests and to use these tests widely, because we're not entirely sure what to make of the existing ones. I think in the coming week or weeks, we'll have a better understanding of which ones to use, and we'll probably start to see more and more testing here in Canada. One of the issues is, you know, let's say a test is positive, and it's truly a positive test. What we don't know now is to what extent is that person immune to COVID-19, and, and if they are immune, for how long will that person be immune? So there still are a lot of unanswered questions. Okay. Uh, insightful chat, as always. Dr. Bogosh, thanks for your time. Thank you.